sorry about the lateness. I had some technical difficulties. Um, but uh, I am here now. My bad. Um, didn't realize that the link would not appear in the first uh, post that I put on Instagram, but uh, hopefully people should be able to see the second post and be able to get on here. I do want to take care of some really quick business, guys, only because um, I don't want you to feel like I'm ignoring you. It's just that I have a uh, very short period of time to be able to address your guys' concerns. I want to make sure I do that. If you guys do have questions for me specifically, I'm not ignoring you on purpose. I just need you to know that because I have a limited amount of time, I'm only going to be able to talk about what I'm able to talk about. And please feel free to DM me later. So... Um, I can address whatever questions or concerns that you guys have. Okay? Just going to hang on for one more minute while more people get on if they want to see this. Um, and I will be uh, posting it later to both Instagram and all the other social media platforms as well. So. I, I, somebody's asking if I really will answer questions. Yes, I will. I promise, guys. I may not get to them right away. But, um, yes, I promise I will get to all of you guys. Okay? I'm not going to ignore you. Guys, I'm going to request, just because of what I'm trying to help everybody with in terms of addressing concerns, um, if you feel the need to harass me on here, please just leave the live stream. Don't do that, okay? Let's, let's at least for a few minutes just be nice to each other. I would appreciate that. All right, guys, um, it is 12.14 my time, way, way, way past when I was supposed to start, and I apologize again, had a little bit of technical difficulties, um, but uh, the reason that I am doing this live stream right now um, is because I felt the need to do so at this point, so... Based on accusations that I'm currently being accused of, um, I have to step up and tell my side. It's time. And I feel the need to do this because uh, what was initially a small situation has become quite misrepresented. And um, I can't allow it to continue. So here's what I'm going to address, okay? Okay. Um, in the following order. Number one, supposed threats to my ex-girlfriend and continued harassment. Number two, being accused of being a pedophile. Number three, suing minors. Um, number four, being called transphobic. Um, number five, accusations that I caused certain accounts on Instagram to be deleted. 
uh, number six, that I used an app or software to increase my follower base and possibly pay them to follow me, okay? Guys, if anybody's being negative on here, please don't read the comments. I, I'm trying to create a safe environment for everybody here right now. Um, okay, moving on. All right, so um, first, guys, let's... Um, I'm sorry, guys. This is uh, not okay. to deal with that situation. I'm sorry. I apologize for that person's behavior. Okay. Um, so first, let's start off with uh, my ex. Now, supposedly, um, I threatened to kill her or I, I, I threatened her to kill herself. I guess, technically. Um, in order for that to be true, I would have to have had sent an email from my account, which according to the screenshots, for those of you who've seen the screenshots, uh, appear to be true. And um, here's the backstory that none of you have seen until now. So, when threats and harassment came, uh, back in October of 2018. Um, my ex went to the police to uh, file a claim with her local police department against both myself and my then girlfriend. Um, by the way, just to clear this up, okay, whoever thinks that I proposed to my then girlfriend um, and started calling her uh, fiance. Um, I consider that to be extremely funny, uh, just considering that I'm, yes, it's all gonna come out today. Uh, considering that legally I am still married, uh, but I have been separated for the past three years. It's a long story that does not need getting into right now. Uh, no, I'm not proud of the situation, but um, my ex ex-girlfriend has a lot to do with it. And we'll talk about that in a few. So, my ex-ex files a claim with her local police department. And what she gave to the police was the following email that I'm gonna read to you guys, okay? <clears throat> October 1st, uh, 2.25 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. The following that I'm about to read to you guys is all in caps, okay? Meaning, I guess, the way this was written, it was to be screamed or yelled or whatever. Um, I am so tired of hearing your poor me, poor me, blank, over and over. You effed up. It's over, done. If you had been so pathetically insecure, you wouldn't be in this position. We wouldn't be in this position. Stop trying to tug at my heart with concern and nostalgia because I have no sympathy or love or anything for you whatsoever. At this point, I don't care uh, if my girlfriend at that time uh, has been harassing you or not. You deserve every little bit of what's coming to you. She made me happy when you didn't. You may as well stop sending me pictures or forwarding messages or even contacting me, I don't care anymore. That is supposedly the first email that my ex-ex received. And um, then uh, she replied back, JC, Steve, what happened to you? I honestly don't even have a response to this. And then the reply back to that one was, shut that blank up. You are an insecure, clingy failure as a partner, failure as a partner, and you made me this way. I hope it turns out to be you so I'll never have to see you again. Do not ever contact me or my girlfriend again. Those were the, f the beginning 
of the correspondence um, that happened on Monday, October 1st, okay? Um, as far as what was sent back to me after that second response was the following. And guys, I need you to pay attention to this because <laughs> this is what makes everything that happened after these emails less credible. Okay? My ex-ex replied back with, after she had some time to look at everything that was written to her. Um, hang on one second as I find that. Sorry for the delay, guys. Uh, okay, here we go. This was her reply back on the um, this is what the reply back was from my ex ex after those two emails that she had received that were in mostly caps. Okay. Believe it or not, <clears throat> I actually believe that you were not involved in the email sent to me yesterday and this morning. Some of the things contained in those emails were too cruel to be said, even by you. After the cluster of emails this morning, I began receiving emails that appeared to be sent to myself from myself and were spam porn site advertisements slash dating sites. Through the header in Gmail, I was able to determine that the IP addresses were from someone else's state, not California. I believe you, I believe your and my emails may have both been spoofed, not hacked. But that's a question for Yahoo to determine. This came from her, herself. She specifically said, based on the language of those emails, that it couldn't have been written by me somebody who knew me for two years. So that's that. Um, next, uh, let me go back here. Sorry guys. So this, this email that happened came before she filed the police report. Uh, she herself, like I said, stated on the verbiage that she couldn't imagine someone like me writing the email. Um, so what happened next was um, after she filed that police report, she also put on social media that she felt that I had actually done what she said I didn't do in terms of providing those emails. Um, she provided quote unquote proof to the police officer based on the email that I just read off to you guys. And she also posted on social media that she was going to do the following. Um, this is an email that I wrote because I received a voicemail from Officer Barrera, uh, officer, uh, the officer that was in charge of taking the report, okay? Um, and so I said, hello, Officer blank. I left you a voicemail yesterday. I guess you were not able to call back. If you could please respond to this email no later than 12 p.m. Central Standard Time on Tuesday, it will help with the phone appointment that I have with an attorney in the city at two o'clock. I'm writing to you because of some things that my ex ex has put on social media. I need to know if it's possible for them to be true or if she's quote unquote blowing smoke. Number one, she claims she filed a report in addition to local police to the state police cybercrime unit. Is it possible to do this 
if she hasn't even given you solid proof for your case. Number two, has my ex ex given you more evidence other than the one email that she sent you? Number three, in addition to the state police cyber crime unit, she claims she has either provided you or them with her phone and her laptop to be da, 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 uh, to be scanned by forensics as well as an order for phone providers on myself and my then girlfriend. Neither I nor my then girlfriend have been contacted by our phone providers in regards to this request. She also claims that the DA is aware of her case and is ready to assist her. Uh, number four, she also claims that either you or the state police have contacted the convention that I'm supposed to be attending this month and that my then girlfriend will also be attending and that the convention has been advised not to allow my then girlfriend to be present. Is this true? Because my girlfriend has not been contacted by the convention, nor has anything been sent to her. Your help in answering these questions will be greatly appreciated. So there were four things that uh, my ex-ex had posted on social media, all of which were relatable to those four specific points in terms of what she said that she was going to do and that she had already done. This was the reply back, guys, from the officer, okay? From the officer, he said, quote unquote, she is blowing smoke. Nothing further has been done through the Rock Island, for, through the uh, local police department. She only provided one email, and that is the quote unquote fabricated email that came from you. I can't speak for the state police department, but I highly doubt that they are doing anything about this. Okay? So, in terms of the credibility, in terms of what she, what my ex ex said she was doing and in the process of doing, providing her phone, providing a laptop, all that stuff, that was not true. It was blowing smoke. All right, um, so my first ex, okay, continued to provide supposed proof to convince me that my then girlfriend was behind all the calls and threats that she had been receiving, even going so far as to pinpoint a location that she thought all the communication was coming from. Uh, it was at this point that I realized something that I hadn't done. So, oops on my part. But I did not secure my email with two-step uh, two authentication. I changed the email that I'd been using for voiceovers on October 7th. Now, please keep in mind, guys, that there were only two people who had access to my email, um, including flight information uh, for upcoming conventions, um, which was, you know, uh, the reservations were for myself and my then girlfriend. Um, once I implemented the security, um, my first ex no longer had access to those emails, but, um, that doesn't necessarily mean that she couldn't have copied them down. Um, and um, what then began happening was communications with the guest relations department for the convention that I was planning on attending that month and um, stated that she was planning on going to the convention herself, um, stating that she didn't feel safe because my then girlfriend was going to be there. Um, Uh, let's see, what else? Um, and that she shouldn't be allowed to come. Uh, the only information that my first ex provided 
to the convention chair was the exact same email that I read to you guys and that was provided to the police department. Um... So because the con chair didn't feel that that was enough of a security measure to take against a person that was going to attend the convention, um, the, my then girlfriend was allowed to still come, which greatly pissed off my first ex. So it made her so upset to the point where she started bad-mouthing the convention on social media and advised con-goers to ban the convention as well. Does this sound similar to what's currently going on, guys? Because that's currently happening right now. Um, fast forward to the morning of the convention. Ah, thank you. Okay. So fast forward to the morning of the convention, um, two hours before I'm supposed to leave. Okay. I arrive at the airport. Um, when I arrive, <laughs> I discover that my flight had been canceled. I don't know if you guys just heard that, but when you arrive at an airport, normally you get a confirmation that you're ready to go, you're ready to fly. My plane ticket had been canceled two hours prior to me leaving. Guys, I'm trying to be as nice as I possibly can be. I'm going to ask you, if you can't be nice on this, while I'm trying to clear things up for the people who actually do care, please stop. There's no reason for this, for you guys to be doing this harassment right now. Okay. All right, so, day of the convention, two hours before, um... I find out that my flight gets canceled, okay? I had to wait a half an hour <laughs> for uh, special services. Uh, they have a special services department at the airport to speak with them and um, find out that supposedly the convention chair called the airline to cancel the reservation called the airline to cancel the... Two hours before I'm supposed to fly to that convention, the con chair calls to cancel the reservation. Yeah, I know. It doesn't make sense. Right? But I was freaking out. I mean, like, when does that ever happen to anybody? <laughs> like, you know, it doesn't happen to anybody. But it happened to me. So, um, I... I say, uh, let me make a quick call. I need to, um, you know, I need to figure out what's going on. So uh, three hours Eastern Standard Time, um, when I'm there at uh, 4.30 in the morning, um, I wake the con, uh, the guest uh, chair up uh, out of a sleep because I'm freaking out. And I'm, I'm saying, I need to know what's going on. Did you for some weird reason cancel my flight ticket and she's coming out of this sleep and she's going what are you talking about i'm going well my plane ticket's been canceled and she goes you're kidding me i'm going no she goes um i did not call an airline when i've been asleep this whole time and if they're saying it happened in the last two hours let me talk to the airline and see what i can do to try and fix this so, <laughs> keep in mind, guys, that um, <laughs> I, 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 
as I'm trying to get this figured out, as as the the guest chair is is trying to figure out what to do next, I get a message from my then girlfriend saying that the same thing happened to her ticket. Hers got canceled as well. So, um, I can't point fingers, okay? But based on the fact that only two people had access to my email, one of them whom was me and the other who was my girlfriend, and let me, let me kind of specify. The reason that my first ex had access to my email is because I needed help in contacting conventions. That was the email address that I used at the time for conventions to contact me. And she was also able to help in replying back to conventions that had questions for me if I wasn't able to get to them because of my other job. Okay? So that's the reason why my first ex had access to my email. So even though I can't point fingers, guys, right? The fact that my plane ticket was canceled, that the guest chair did not cancel my plane ticket reservation, that I didn't cancel my plane ticket reservation, that only leaves one other person. So hopefully you can put two and two together regarding that. Um, so now, <laughs> I, I mean, things worked out. I was able to go to the convention, thank goodness. Um, but uh, now we're going to fast forward to supposedly continuing harassing emails and random calls that my first ex um, had been receiving for a month and a half after that incident. At this point, I had the need to hire an attorney because the envelope was pushed when my wife uh, started getting texts from a random number, but based on what we said, we're coming from my first ex. Yes, um, she did have uh, uh, my uh, she did have my wife's phone number. Um, so I go to another convention at the beginning of December to see my girlfriend and her family. And I made a promise to do that to her because I felt if I was going to be close to this person, I needed to get to know um, all of her stuff. So, uh, so <laughs> the morning that I'm leaving, and this was for another convention that I was going to meet her at, okay? Um, I arrive at the key at the at the airport right two hours before I'm supposed to leave for the convention and um, <laughs> no joke guys the morning um, while I'm there at the airport no sooner had I gotten there checked in but the thing the same thing happened my plane ticket got canceled um, so I went to special services to reinstate it. I get through TSA and no sooner after I pass through TSA and I go to the gate, I have my ticket printed, by the way, guys, I'm holding the ticket in my hand. Okay. I go to the gate to confirm my seat. And they look me up in the computer and they can't find me. My reservation had been canceled again, a second time. The same thing happened, guys, four more times. Four more times within the span of every time that my ticket was reinstated, it got canceled no more than a minute and a half after it was reinstated. So <laughs> the difference between the first incident and the second incident is that this time anonymously from the internet and nobody called in to cancel it. 
Um, so that was the difference. The question comes up and it's a valid one, okay? I just want us to all think rationally for a second, okay? Valid one, okay? I just want us to all think rationally for a second, okay? If my girlfriend, right, was happy with me, I'm flying out to go see her and spend time with her and her family. And my first ex is supposed to be out of the picture, right? <laughs> um, what purpose would my then girlfriend have in threatening or harassing my first ex if she's supposed to be an ex? <laughs> it makes no sense for a current girlfriend or significant other to contact an ex if they were supposed to be an ex. It makes no sense. The logic doesn't make sense. And you add to it, okay, that at the point for my convention in December, why would the person that I'm supposed to be seeing while they're spending time with her and her family want to cancel my reservation? <laughs> five times in a row when it's all that she'd been looking forward to and talking about. The reservation, by the way, to go to that convention in December was made prior to my two-step two security authentic authentication. Okay? So my first ex still had access to that reservation. And even though it was conducted on the internet, as far as canceling the plane ticket, again, there were only two people who had access to the reservation, myself and my first ex. All right. Prior to my trip in December, um, my then girlfriend uh, received the following voicemail from a Google phone number which a, for those of you guys who aren't familiar with Google Voice, um, you can, a user can basically um, call from an anonymous number that is not their own number and not be detected as far as what their actual number is. I'm gonna play this for you guys. I'm hoping that you can hear it. Um, I do not like listening to this, but this was a voicemail that my girlfriend, my then girlfriend received prior to going to the convention in December. We're talking about maybe a week before it happened. Here it is. She didn't say that three times but I played it back for you three times so you guys could hear it. I don't know in what other world that isn't considered threatening, but when somebody says that they're coming for you, I'm sorry, I don't care if the person initially doing it said it was a joke or maybe thought it was a joke or it was supposed to be a joke. When you do that to somebody you're not even supposed to be speaking with, That is not okay. Shortly after that voicemail, maybe a couple of days later, still before the convention, okay, my then girlfriend receives the following message. Uh, let's see here. All right. She messaged me. Um, she sent me a link for TikTok my then girlfriend at the time had TikTok, and this is what she messaged me. This is the TikTok account that has been checking my profile for the last several weeks. Uh, remember how I said I thought it was shady? Well, today I clicked on the Instagram button and guess whose account it took me to? The first ex-girlfriend. Um, you can check it out yourself. I hate that I clicked on it 
because now she probably has it tracked and will say that I'm stalking her. However, it would appear she has in fact been stalking me. This is creepy. What other accounts of mine has she been checking frequently? And then she came back uh, after a break and she said, so I've done some more research. Apparently her number one fan is linked to a musically tracking app called musically.icu. The way I found this out was I clicked on the YouTube uh, button on the fan's TikTok profile. So not only has she been stalking me, but I'm going to assume that she had been tracking my clicks on both of, uh, on both those at this point. So what my, what I'm, the reason that I'm sharing all this with you guys is because of what my first ex has been claiming this entire time on social media as far as her being harassed, her being, um, you know, uh, bullied, uh, providing proof via emails, which at this point in time are hard to believe based on what she initially told me and what the police officer even said. Okay. Words are very different from actions. Somebody can say anything, but it doesn't necessarily mean they're going to act on it. What I've provided you guys is evidence that not only did my first ex contact my girlfriend, how she got a hold of her phone number, I don't know, but she did. Threatened her saying, I'm coming after you. And then tracked my girlfriend on her Tic Tac account. So I'm sorry, but for either of us to be accused of harassment and threats um, is uh, not okay to do. Um, so that's my horror story, basically. If you feel that after what I have shared with you guys, all right, that either my girlfriend or I did have something to do with my first ex harassing me or harassing us, harassing her, then there's no reason for us, um, to, you know, it, there's no reason for you guys to follow my account on either Instagram or Facebook. Okay. Um, I think that based on the fact that you guys, that I've provided enough proof to you, and I am seeing some comments in the messages saying provide proof, I may consider doing that. Um, the fact that you guys, you know, uh, want to see something, I, I might consider that. I'm not promising you that I will, but I will consider it. Okay. Um, but if after me sharing those two specific things with you guys that you feel you still don't believe me, right? Then let's just do each other a favor. Don't follow me anymore on any of the social media that I have. Okay. Just Let's do each other at least that favor. Um, for those of you who have now heard my side of that particular story, um, and you may not necessarily believe me 100%, but there's doubt, there's reasonable doubt, then... All I ask you guys is to stop spreading untruths that either myself or my fir or my second girlfriend were harassing or bullying her. It's not deserved. And that's all I've got to say about that. All right? So, um...
let's move on to pedophilia, okay? The hugest slander <laughs> that has been spread on social media regarding myself. Slander <laughs> that has been spread on social media regarding myself. I'm going to let you guys know something. Um, this is not something that I share publicly because it really isn't anybody else's business except mine and people who I know who I'm close with. But apparently my personal life can't be personal right now. So. The reason why this particular slander affects me so much in regards to me being called a pedophile. I have three kids, guys. 21, 16, and 9. My nine-year-old is my pride and joy. That is my daughter. And it sickens me that I am being labeled what I'm being labeled by the community for a lot of people who have accounts that hate me. Um, the accusation that I am being accused with according to other people's definition of being a pedophile, of being a pedophile, um, upsets me greatly. And before I begin, I, I feel it's important for all of us to be on the same page right now, okay? As to what exactly a pedophile is, what constitutes a pedophile, since that word is being used very loosely right now by teenagers, who are accusing me and causing quite the outrage among many of my followers. So let me bring up something that I did some research on. Um, and hopefully that will help all of us being on the same page. Okay. So, uh, let me go to my folder here. All right. This is, uh, where did I get this from so you guys know? And you guys can look this up if you want to, okay? According to an article that I read, um, according to the article that I read, okay, on pedophilia by Psychology Today. Psychology Today. Now, let's keep in mind where this article is coming from is by people who are licensed psychologists or psychiatrists that they have taken enough education and schooling to know the difference between what somebody is and somebody isn't as far as being a pedophile. Okay. Not by people who haven't had enough experience in knowing exactly what one is. So according to what I am looking at here, on psychology today. Uh, by the way, if you guys just type in psychology today and look up pedophilia, you'll find the same thing that I'm about to read to you. Okay. Pedophilia is an ongoing sexual, ongoing sexual attraction to prepubertal children. It is considered a paraphilia, a condition in which a person's sexual arousal and gratification depend on fantasizing about and engaging, engaging in sexual uh, behavior that is atypical and extreme. Pedophilia is defined as recurrent, recurrent and intense sexual arousing fantasies, sexual urges, or behaviors involved uh, involving sexual activity with a prepubescent child or children, generally aged 13 years or younger, over a period of at least six months. 
Pedophiles are more often men and can be attracted to either or both sexes. How well they relate to adults of the same or opposite sex varies. Symptoms of what a pedophile would involve. According to the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders, 5th edition, um, the following criteria must be met. Number one, recurrent, intense sexual fantasies, urges, or behaviors involving sexual activity with a prepubescent child, generally age 13 years of age or younger, for a period of at least six months. Number two, Sexual urges have been acted on or have caused significant distress or impairment in social, occupational, or other important areas of functioning. And number three, the person is at least, the person who is being the pedophile, is at least 16 years or years of age or older, and there is at least a five-year older difference between the child in the first category. However, it does not include an individual in late adolescence involved in an ongoing sexual relationship with a 12 or 13 year old. Okay. The, the, the things that I need to stress to you guys in terms of us all being on the same page in terms of what categorizes a pedophile is that they have to act on sexual urges that they have. Saying something and actually doing something. Two different things. Okay? So based on that, let's get to the messages, the screenshots that you guys all have seen. Okay? Between myself, the 14-year-old from February of last year, and the 16-year-old from April slash May of last year, okay? Is what you saw as far as the screenshots, are they fake? No, they're not fake. Should a teenager have to disclose their age to somebody communicating with them? Absolutely not. However, what is clear, okay, is that the individual who has an account which is not their actual picture starts a leading conversation. I'm talking about the 14-year-old right now, guys. They start a leading conversation from a post. They then transfer that to a private message, DMing. Before I DM'd, I looked at the profile picture. A uh, picture appeared to be over the age of 21. And then communications began on the private DM, like I said. And the individual who I was speaking with made it a point to play a game with me in regards to guess how old I am. It could have been inferred that once the age was disclosed, she could have used those as screenshots to her advantage. So keep in mind that once I was made aware of how old she was, and you guys have seen this in the screenshots, okay? Once I was made aware of how old she was, I apologized profusely for calling her attractive. After learning that she decided to post those screenshots, after she told me that she was okay with my apology, that she still looked up to me, she then turned those pictures in to my first ex whom I was not involved with at the time. I was not wrong, guys, 
in calling a young woman attractive. I provided a compliment. However, in finally reasonalizing her age, as I'm stressing again, remember, because you guys have seen this in the screenshots, I apologized for what I said. That is the only interaction that I had with her. I didn't track her down. I didn't stalk her. I didn't see where she lived and try and hunt her down. Done. That's it. Now, uh, you'd think that if I didn't see someone's age on their profile, that I would ask before communicating with somebody else later on. I mean, you think I would have learned my lesson, you know, uh, from the first time. But apparently, <laughs> um, it had to happen again in order for me to see that my behavior had to stop in terms of what I was doing. So, yes, I am admitting, guys, that I called a 16-year-old hot. Okay? A cosplayer when she asked for my opinion on how her cosplay looked. Uh, I didn't realize it at the time as far as how old she was. I said what I said. Um, and when she... And, I, and, and, and basically, uh, I don't remember what happened after that, but I stopped communicating with her. That was it. She never told me what her actual age was. What she did do, however, is go directly to my first ex. She had screenshots of the conversation, which you guys have all seen. Okay? Which, guys, I'm not really not trying to point fingers here. I'm just trying to clear up the fact that nobody is 100% perfect. Okay? Um, everybody does bad stuff from time to time. But if you take a close look at the entire screenshot conversation between the 16-year-old cosplayer and my first ex-girlfriend, my first ex-girlfriend does state, if you read all the way through the screenshots, that she's a homewrecker. I am saying this because we need to keep a very clear perspective in terms of the uh, the validity of some of the things that she has uh, put out there on social media and shared with uh, confession pages. So, if anyone is recording this right now, guys, okay, which I'm sure probably you guys are all taking screenshots or doing whatever. Maybe you're recording it on your own phones. I don't care. I don't know. It doesn't matter. Here's what I want to do. All right? Because I don't want anybody to say that I never apologized for anything, especially since I already apologized to the 14-year-old. If anyone is recording this right now, please share this with the 16-year-old cosplayer because I never had the opportunity to do this before today. Um, keep in mind, I just realized about a week ago it was shared with me from somebody who was on this other account's post. They, they sh shared the screenshots of the conversation that my first ex had with the 16-year-old. That's the first time I was made aware of how old she was. Okay? So, again, for those of you guys who are watching this right now and are recording it, please share this with the cosplayer. I am sorry for my actions as far as them making you feel uncomfortable. That was never my intention, and I apologize profusely that you were offended and that you were made to feel uncomfortable. That was never my intention to happen. You may never forgive me, and that's your choice and your right. But please know that I am sorry. Okay.
So, um, after uh, being profusely embarrassed a second time, and like I said, I realized what I was doing was not okay. The way I was interacting with people was not okay. But guys, keep in mind the two screenshots conversations that you have seen are both from last year. One from February, one from April slash May. You do not see any screenshots about me conversing with any minors in a flattering manner after that. None. There is nothing out there. This happened more than a year ago. And all that I did was flatter people. Not in the correct way. But that's what I did. That's it. I did not have... I, I, I don't even want to go there because I don't even want to say it. It's gross. But that's all I did. That's all that you guys can accuse me of as far as, quote unquote, being a pedophile. That's it. Words that I used to make people feel uncomfortable. You can't be, you can't keep tagging me as a pedophile when it's not true. And your accusations of me, whoever you guys are that are actually tagging me as one, the accusations that you have for me, okay, are misrepresented. And you're making the definition of a pedophile to include making uncomfortable and flattering comments to underage minors. And it's grossly being tagged um, onto me when there is no cause. So, for those of you who I never have met, and there's a lot of you that are on here who I never have met, um, the reason that I go to cons is because it's an opportunity for you all who wish to meet me to be able to do so when otherwise you wouldn't have the ability to do so. Okay. It's my way of giving back to you guys because I know that a lot of you, and I've, I've talked to a lot of people at conventions, a lot of you save up an entire year's worth of whatever money that you get to just to be able to pay for one convention to go to. I get that. And it's my way of being able to give back because a lot of you guys who do support projects that I do and want the opportunity to meet with me, I want to be able to meet you guys as well. Um, so I want to share the following comments with you um, from two different team cosplayers, okay, who I had the opportunity to meet last year at a convention. And... Uh, Especially with the stuff that's been going on recently as far as the harassment, even the harassment that you guys are displaying on here right now, which at this point I'm just ignoring because you guys are just making fun of yourselves at this point. Okay? You have to realize that. Um, but I'm sharing this with you because um, I often look back on this to help me feel better when... Uh, um, when I, when, you know, I may not feel my best. Um, these two specific posts that I'm about to read off to you uh, were by two different cosplayers that I met when I was at this convention. And um, this is, I, I, I look back on these because this reminds me why I do what I do and why I love doing what I do. So here's the first one. Um, let's go to here. All right, uh, just to keep the person's identity, I'm not gonna say who actually posted this, but this was on their Instagram account. 
and I'm going to magnify this a little bit so you guys can see it, or so I can read it to you. Um, all right, so this says, as excited as I was to meet all the other voice actors we got to meet, I have to put a whole slide to the point of meeting the best part of the entire con. And that was meeting Derek, uh, voiceover Prince. Derek is probably one of the sweetest people I have ever met, and I absolutely adore him. Luna and, uh, uh, sorry, I uh, didn't mean to say the name. Uh, my friend and I will forever remember the shock when we realized that it was him, he, who was asking if he could show us in the live stream due to our Monokuma and Monomi Kigus. Uh, I, the live stream that I do, they were referring to as wordplay. Once we realized it was him and he had to go get ready for the signing, which we were standing in line for, we stood there in utter awe. He was so kind and it was just a dream to meet him due to Uma being the best boy. And my love for Uma has only grown since meeting him and my eagerness to cosplay him is also getting stronger every second. Um, I'm still in some state of shock after meeting him, but he deserves so much love for being so amazing. Thank you, Derek, for putting up with my photo. Sorry for snatching your wig. That was the first one. Uh, here was the second post by uh, the cosplayer's friend. I have to scroll out, move back. There we go. All right, here we go. I have to say, my con highlight was definitely meeting Kokichi Oma himself, voiceover prince. Literally before V3 came out, I saw Kokichi Oma and I knew he was going to be a big favorite of mine. So meeting Derek in and of itself was a dream of mine. When he came over to, de to my friend and I, uh, because of our Kigus though, it was mind blowing. He was such a kind person and seems so fun to be around just from meeting him. Both there and from meeting him at the signing. Uh, my love for Uma has grown a lot since, and I'm still just in complete and utter awe. If you ever get the chance to meet him and love Uma, definitely take the opportunity because it's so amazing, and he's so kind and genuine. Derek, thank you so much for making this con such an amazing experience for my friend and I. I adore your work, and you made Uma so perfect. Keep being you. I hope to see you again one day. So, uh, I shared both of those with you because people who know me, people who I meet at conventions know who I am. They, because people who know me, people who I meet at conventions know who I am. They don't go off of what other people are saying on accounts who have never met me before in person. And I felt that those were valid and those were relevant to my character. All right. Um, number three, suing minors. Clearly, guys, if you have found evidence or screenshots of me actually serving minors, legally serving them, when, let's keep this in check, I don't even know where they live because of the, anon the anonymity that the internet provides, okay? But just through the legal system, in serving a minor, quote unquote, um, it's not legally possible to sue minors, guys. I don't know if you're aware of that. You can sue the minor's parents, but you can't sue the minor themselves. And the allegations and the rumors that you've actually heard that I make a habit out of suing minors is grossly exaggerated. <laughs> I mean, especially since they can't be sued. So please find something better to do than um, accuse an innocent person of something without proof to back it up. It's uncalled for. All right? Number four. Ah. Uh, being called transphobic. 
no one's perfect, guys. And um, when the comment was made to the trans this year, it made the individual uncomfortable. Uh, they didn't come to me to educate me or help me understand um, that what was said was not okay. Um, so please don't expect a person to know rules of a certain community when they don't know the rules to begin with. Yes, it was wrong. What I said, the situation didn't feel okay at all. Um, but it hurt immensely when I learned that what I did was wrong from a friend who confided in me a conversation that they had with that person who is also trans. Um, it should, you know, it, it should have to be so much better if, um, you know, they had educated me, I want to properly say. I honestly thought that I was trying to be helpful. I, I really did, guys. Um, <laughs> you know, because I was trying to make them feel better about themselves, not being demeaning, which is how they took it. And then they shared that discomfort with a confession page. And uh, the confession page posted the conversation. I was never consulted on the whole story. I was ignorant of my actions at the time. But you can't call me transphobic because of that. I haven't earned that title or deserved it. I try to support all people, no matter you know what their preference is. I, I, I support my friends no, no matter what their preference is. And I think it's sad Honestly, I'm going to share something with you guys because I have had interactions with a lot of other uh, trans people. I think it is sad in this day and age, in this community that we live in right now, that there are not financial options available for people who wish to become who they know they are better off being because they are um, restricted um, from being able to do so. They don't have enough money to be able to make themselves the way that they would like to be. And um, it hurts me greatly that um, many of you guys accuse me of one single comment that I made as being transphobic. We know people out there who are actually transphobic, people who are haters. I'm not one of them. So, Let's move on to six, okay? I know that you guys are waiting with bated breath to hear what I have to say about um, accounts being taken down. So, accusations that I cause certain accounts to be deleted. <clears throat> um, number one, <laughs> why am I being accused of something when the accounts accusing me have nothing to back it up? Guys, I work. <laughs> Typically, I work from 8 o'clock in the morning until 8 o'clock at night with breaks in between to be able to try and get to as many of your guys' messages as possible when I'm able to do that. I work for a living. Yes, I know it's a shock. Because I'm a voice actor, I shouldn't have to work another job. Well, not all voiceovers pay everything that we would like them to pay. So, yeah, I have two jobs. I have to make ends meet. Guys, I don't have time to take down accounts. I don't even know how to create a fake account. Oh my gosh, you would see the, the technical difficulty that I had last night in just trying to get this set up for today. It was crazy, it's insane. I'm not technically inclined like a lot of you guys are that are more savvy, okay? Um, so, how do I have the time to delete accounts that are uh, harassing me and why would I do it? You guys are going to say and do whatever you're going to say and do. I can't stop you, okay? Why should I? I don't block anybody anymore. 
There's no reason to. Um, so please, you guys, don't give me credit for something that I can't do. As for fake accounts that are pretending to be like me that are taking other accounts down, well, <laughs> I guess if I'm going to look at this in a positive light, I'm thankful for the flattery, okay? But um, can we please do fans a favor? And if you don't specifically state in your bio that the account is a parody of myself who has been taken down or, or an account that is Derek Stephen Prince, um, please state that in your bio that it's a parody account so that followers know who to follow and who to joke with and laugh with and who they can go to if they want to learn more about the projects that I'm doing. Okay, please. I mean, the, the, that way the followers will be less confused. And um, lastly, regarding these fake accounts, okay? <laughs> I'm not sure who they are, how they even work, what they do. Um, but, uh, <sighs> supposedly some of these confessions were taken down, I guess, multiple times. Um, that's what people have told me by uh, these fake accounts sending them videos of animals being hurt, you know, whatever it is. I, I don't know. If anybody, I'm, I'm, I'm going to ask us if we can refrain from some of the negativity that's going on here right now, just for a second, please, because I'm actually speaking on behalf of one of the confession accounts right now, guys, believe it or not. So, um... If anybody knows these fake accounts, okay, that are attacking some of the confession pages with stuff, like toxic stuff, like hurting animals, whatever it is that, that anybody's doing, if you know somebody who's doing this, please, guys, ask them to stop, okay? It's not okay. Um, I mean, let's not fight fire with fire, please, you know? Um, the flames of anger are never going to die out if everybody's doing that. And if we can be better and take the higher road, I know we'd all like the toxicity to stop that's in the community. Um, I'm hoping with this video and once I post it, um, that it will, but I can only do what I can do. All right. Last but not least, that I have some sort of app or software. All right. Last but not least, that I have some sort of app or software that um, has just drastically increased my my follower base. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, that has to be the most flattering but ridiculous accusation that I've heard this week. Um. Let me educate you guys on something. I, I, I don't mean to be sarcastic, but maybe some of you are out there really don't know how this works. And trust me, I learned about this recently, so I get it. I used to have criteria in accepting people on Instagram. They had to block three specific people, one of which was my first ex. And I felt the need to do that, and I had every right to make that request because my then girlfriend, my family, and I are all being targeted and threatened. When I chose to make my account public, I, um, thinking, you know, if I opened it up, that maybe that would help calm down people because they'd know that I have nothing to hide. They could just follow me as they choose. Um, I was hoping that the accusations would die down, but the exact opposite happened. They just increased. And what changed is that after I made it private again, um, I chose to clean up my account you know, to make it age friendly. Uh, some of you guys saw I didn't have as many posts as I used to have. I did that for a reason. 
It wasn't because I was trying to, well, but let's be clear. Yes, I was trying to hide stuff, but I was trying to hide stuff because it wasn't age appropriate for some people to see stuff. That's why I did that. So I chose to clean up my account and then, um, you know, uh, the confession pages increased their, 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 their tagging of me, their hatred for me, whatever you want to call it. And we all know what happens, guys, when one person's targeted, right? All these accounts that don't follow that particular account start wanting to follow that account and seeing what's going on. In less than four hours after stuff was posted by these confessions accounts, I had over 250 people wanting to follow me. So as much as you'd like to give me credit for the increase in my numbers, confession pages, thank you, because you're the ones that allowed that to happen. I'm sorry. You know, to, to say that I actually have to pay people to follow me is ridiculous. It's 100% ridiculous. It happened just out of the nature of whatever you guys posted. So, anyway. I may not have addressed all of your guys' concerns. Um, I did, I believe, cover the majority of them. All I can do is provide you with honest answers, guys, uh, and information and hope that the continued harassment that I've been receiving from accounts stops. Um, you know, people who want to continuously bring others down are toxic. And um, they provide no positivity. Uh, I honestly don't know how you guys get up in the morning feeling good about the day when the only desire is to see others fail. And I'm sorry, but those are the people that are greatly destroying the convention atmosphere um, by telling people not to go to conventions. They are providing absolutely no positivity whatsoever. And, um, you know, like I mentioned before, guys, I've met people who have to save an entire year of their allowance or whatever it is that they get if they don't even get an allowance just to be able to go to one convention. And um, people who look forward to wanting to go to this, maybe save a whole year, you know, they're told, if they're told not to go because guests are called something that they clearly are not, or the propaganda that's out there, I have no words. Um, but on behalf of that community, I am asking for you guys, please, to stop. Stop the toxicity that is continually being provided. Focus on positivity. You know, conventions are supposed to be the one place where all of us who love and enjoy anime are supposed to feel safe. You guys are not providing that. Those of you who are, are doing what you're doing and saying what you're saying. Um, for your own sakes as well as mine. So, please, guys, just stop. And unfortunately, as much as people want to bring others down, um, the people who I have met who know me and who know what a good person I am, um... It'll far outweigh those who are toxic and who choose to continue doing what they're doing. They're only going to bring more negativity and more negative attention to themselves. Um, you know, <laughs> based on what a couple of accounts shared with me for, for some confession pages, accounts posted negative material that in one case promoted suicide. Um, I'm shocked that you guys honestly... For, for anybody who was doing stuff like that, who I got a screenshot of, um, I'm shocked that you guys weren't reported before. Could have been anybody that didn't like what you guys were posting that could have taken you down. I, I, I'm, I'm not trying to be mean. I'm just being honest. 
you know? Um, and uh, the other thing in, in regards to um, conventions that I want to make sure that, you know, I, I get out there is that, you know, if conventions become targets for confession pages animosity that they might have towards certain people, then conventions are no longer be, going to be a fun place to, to go to. And, um, you know, uh, then we will have to find other outlets instead of conventions for being able to meet up and share our love for anime. So, um, <laughs> I'm still shocked by you guys posting what you're posting on here. It's, it's, it's just making you guys look really clownish. Anyway, all right. Um, that's all I have to say for now. I apologize if any of you guys were asking me questions that I wasn't able to answer them. Um, but like I said, please feel free to d direct message me. I will answer your questions. I may not be able to answer all of them right away, but I will. I promise you I will. And... Um, I hope you guys have a great rest of your day, and I hope you guys have a great weekend. Take care, guys.